Have you ever wondered how the mighty Sparta, a symbol of military strength, discipline, and courage, met its downfall? Let's journey back to the era of the ancients, to the rugged landscapes of Greece where the city-state of Sparta stood as a beacon of military prowess. Born through the fierce discipline of its citizens, Sparta was a society like no other, where warriors were bred, not made, where each Spartan was a cog in the grand machine of war. At the zenith of its glory, during the Persian and Peloponnesian Wars, Sparta was a force to be reckoned with. Its hoplites with their characteristic scarlet cloaks and bronze shields were the epitome of bravery and resilience. They were the bulwark against Persian invasions and the power that tipped the balance during the Peloponnesian War. However, as the saying goes, pride comes before a fall. But as we know, the sun also sets on the greatest of empires. Sparta's decline began with the Peloponnesian War, a brutal conflict that lasted from 431 to 404 BC. This war, a cataclysmic duel between the forces of Athens and Sparta, was a spectacle of power, strategy, and treachery. At the heart of the action were two key figures, Alcibiades and Lysander. Alcibiades, an Athenian statesman and general, was a chameleon of sorts, switching sides multiple times throughout the war. His tactical brilliance and political cunning made him a formidable player in this turbulent period. On the other side was Lysander, a Spartan admiral known for his cunning and ruthlessness. His decisive victory at the Battle of Aegospotami effectively ended the war in favor of Sparta, but winning the war didn't mean Sparta came out unscathed. The cost of victory was immense. The Peloponnesian War had drained Sparta's resources, both human and economic. Thousands of Spartan warriors, the backbone of their society, had fallen in battle. The Halat, Sparta's enslaved population, saw the war as an opportunity to revolt, further destabilizing the Spartan economy. The military machine that was Sparta had been significantly weakened. Beyond the immediate toll, the war also had far-reaching consequences for Sparta. The Spartan way of life, once admired for its discipline and simplicity, had been corrupted. The Spartan leaders, intoxicated by their victory, became embroiled in political intrigues and power struggles, leading to a decline in their moral and ethical standards. The war also marked a shift in the balance of power in the Greek world. While Sparta emerged as the dominant power, its victory was a Pyrrhic one. It had lost a significant portion of its manpower, and its economy was in shambles. The stage was set for other Greek cities to challenge Sparta's dominance. While Sparta emerged victorious, the war left deep scars that would eventually lead to its downfall. The Peloponnesian War marked the beginning of the end for Sparta, setting it on a path towards ruin. Opposed to the Peloponnesian War, Sparta found itself at the helm of Greece, but its leadership was far from peaceful. The Spartan hegemony was a time of Spartan dominance, where the city-state exerted its influence over the entirety of Greece. But it was not a reign marked by benevolence or fair leadership. Instead, Sparta treated its allies poorly, imposing harsh terms on the defeated Athenians and refusing to let them rebuild their long walls and fleet. This caused underlying resentment among its allies, which eventually led to the Corinthian War. This war, taking place from 395 to 387 BC, pitted Sparta against an alliance of other Greek states, mainly consisting of Corinth, Thebes, Athens, and Argos, who were backed by the Persian Empire. A significant figure during this period was King Agasilius II, a Spartan king renowned for his military prowess and cunning. He was the driving force behind Sparta's military strategies during the Corinthian War. However, his ambitious plans to invade Persia were thwarted due to rising tensions and the outbreak of the Corinthian War. Forced to return to Greece, Agesilaus led the Spartan forces in numerous battles. Despite being outnumbered, the Spartans, under Agesilaus' leadership, held their ground. The war was characterized by sporadic land and naval battles, none of which were decisive. The tide, however, turned against Sparta when the Persian Empire decided to throw its support behind Athens, providing them with the resources to build a formidable fleet. The war concluded in 387 BC with the King's Peace, a treaty brokered by the Persian king Artaxerxes II. The treaty validated Persian influence over Asia Minor and the Greek city-states were left to their autonomy. The Corinthian War ended with a truce, but Sparta's reputation was irrevocably damaged. The Spartan hegemony was marked by a decline in Spartan influence, the mistreatment of allies, and a war that would serve as a prelude to Sparta's eventual downfall. 
In 371 BC, a single battle marked the end of Sparta's military dominance, the Battle of Leuctra. The rolling plains of Boeotia near the village of Leuctra became the stage for a clash that would reshape the power dynamics of ancient Greece. The Spartan forces, confident in their superior numbers and military prowess, were led by King Cleombrotus. On the other side, the Theban army was commanded by the innovative general Epaminondas. Few could have predicted the outcome of this fateful encounter. Epaminondas, breaking from traditional Greek warfare tactics, introduced a game-changing strategy. Instead of lining up his hoplites evenly across the battlefield, he concentrated his forces on the left flank, creating a deep and formidable phalanx. This tactic was designed to hit the Spartan line with a force they had never encountered before. As the Thebans advanced, their left flank, led by the Sacred Band, an elite unit of 150 pairs of male lovers smashed into the Spartan right. The shock of the impact was too much for the Spartans. Their line broke and the battle turned in favor of Thebes. Cleombrotus was fatally wounded and his death sent a ripple of despair through the Spartan ranks. The once invincible army of Sparta had been decisively defeated. The loss was not just military, it was symbolic. This was the first time in recorded history that a Spartan king had been killed in battle against an equal enemy. The repercussions of this defeat were far-reaching. The Battle of Leuctra shattered the myth of Spartan invincibility. It was a blow from which Sparta would never fully recover. Meanwhile, Thebes emerged from the dust of battle as a new power. Their victory at Leuctra proved them to be more than capable of challenging the established order. The innovative military strategies of Epaminondas had set a new standard in Greek warfare and had shown the world that Sparta was not untouchable. The Battle of Leuctra marked the end of an era and the rise of Thebes as a new power in Greece. The final blow to Sparta came with the invasion of its homeland, Laconia, in 370 BC. The Theban forces, emboldened by their victory at the Battle of Leuctra and the ascendance of Thebes as a major power, set their sights on the Spartan heartland. Laconia, the home of Sparta, had remained inviolate for centuries. It was a symbol of Spartan might, a testament to their military prowess and discipline. But in 370 BC, this sanctuary was breached. The Thebans, under the command of the brilliant general Epaminondas, marched into Laconia, burning and pillaging as they advanced. They were not just invaders, they were liberators. The Spartan society was built on the backs of the helots, enslaved serfs who cultivated the land and provided the Spartans with the resources they needed to maintain their war machine. The Thebans set them free. The helots had long been the underbelly of Spartan society, their discontent a constant threat to Spartan stability. The Thebans exploited this, using the promise of freedom as a weapon against the Spartans. With each liberated helot, the Spartan system of control weakened, its foundations crumbling under the weight of its own injustice. But the Thebans didn't stop at liberation. They sought to establish a rival state, a counterweight to Spartan power. They founded Messenia, a new state on the western edge of the Peloponnese, and settled the freed helots there. Messenia was a beacon of hope for those who had lived under the Spartan yoke, a symbol of a future free from servitude. With the establishment of Messenia, the balance of power in the Peloponnese shifted. Sparta, once the undisputed master of the region, was now competing with a state founded by its own former slaves. Its lands were lost, its serfs were freed, and its power was waning. With its lands lost and its serfs freed, Sparta was a shadow of its former self. The once mighty city-state was on a path of decline, its glory days fading into the annals of history. By the time of the rise of Macedon under Philip II, Sparta was but a relic of the past. Time and tide had eroded the Spartan glory, leaving behind remnants of a once formidable power. The seeds of Sparta's decline were sown during the Peloponnesian War, a victory yet a Pyrrhic one. It left Sparta weakened, paving the way for their eventual downfall. Following the war, Sparta's dominance was challenged during the Corinthian War. The Battle of Leuctra then marked a turning point with the rise of Thebes as a new power in Greece. The final blow, however, came with the invasion of Laconia. This invasion stripped Sparta of its control over the surrounding region, further diminishing its power. The fall of Sparta was a slow, gradual process, a culmination of several key factors. The fall of Sparta serves as a stark reminder that even the mightiest can fall, and that power, left unchecked, can lead to ruin. Please like and subscribe to the channel.